Hello and welcome to a race that you should not try. It's too hard for you. You won't be able to make it, so don't even try. But if you want to, I'll give you some tips. All right, why am I going backwards? This is an endless endurance race, not clock management technique. Well, I've been trying to be a very difficult distance, 39.9 kilometers. It's brutal for me to try to beat this. So I have an exact point that I'm gonna back up to. See the yellow machine right there? And this is from trial and error. If I make any mistakes after this, I won't, this won't work. What I found was, when I used clock management technique, which is never overfill your timer, I found I was still sometimes hitting the perpetual point versus going flat out from the start. When I would go flat out from the start, the bots were often in the wrong place too much. You see, Melbourne, not Melbourne, I've been very Canadian or North American when I say it in the past, Melbourne is how non-Australians would say it. It's Melbourne. I now know that. So I apologize to all my Melbourne friends. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> oh wait, I'm running out of time. Check it out. See, I planned this all out. No time, no bot in sight. Uh, you see, well, he was probably just at the edge of that chicane. I'm just falling shy. Perfect. So if I go flat out from the start, it's, I can hit the perpetual point, but it's very difficult and very difficult to keep it going. It's, it's just brutal. This is a brutal Brabham race. So I found out when I went, when I wasted a lap there, first of all, I logged some extra distance. Going backwards, your distance stays at zero. You start logging distance the second you go forwards. So I've got some extra distance. Shut up, you stupid Apple Watch. I wasn't talking to you. Ah, Siri interrupted me. Okay, we'll leave that in there for comic relief back to the unbelievable action so this is really difficult and well i got kind of obsessed with this like this is one of my favorite cars so not just australian cars there aren't very many of those but i really love the problem it's just an awesome car and i love melbourne it's a really great track it's too bad that it doesn't exist like check out the specs on this car look at the grip look at the brakes acceleration top speed those are good too by the way the full upgrade cost for there it's just an amazing car i love it i'm so glad that they brought this car back so it just it makes sense to have my favorite australian car at my favorite australian track i was trying this at mount panorama not happening i just couldn't I've, i don't think it's possible to do an endless endurance at mount panorama so melbourne it is even though it's a fictional track it's a really good fictional track Okay, uh, we're gonna do lots of things actually. One of the things we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna be showing you my braking points. And we're also gonna see what's the average speed around here. I'm gonna pick a really good lap and we'll figure out my average speed. That chicane is so much fun in this car. Of course, when you get it wrong, you wanna huck your phone against the wall, but oh well. Once you dial in this track, it is a high speed track. So why would I say you shouldn't try this race? It's just, it's so difficult. I get obsessed sometimes. So here's the thing about a race like this. You don't just have to be fast at time trials. Like, yeah, that's part of it when no one's in your way, but there's cars in your way and they're not always in the same spot. Like, look at this. That's a different passing zone than you saw me doing before. When I overtake a bot like I just did there, I drive it in a little bit deeper, but I, then I'm on the brakes a little bit longer. So I'm giving up something. Now this chicane, this is a huge over break over. Oh gosh, that was kind of risky. Well, I didn't smash the windshield. You might notice you have to go for it so aggressively. And you know what? There's something really interesting here. You're gonna tag the walls once in a while. And there's a funny thing that happens when you tag a wall right after you tag the wall, like about a second after, maybe a half second to a second, your car will wiggle funny. And if you're too close to the wall, you'll re-tag the wall. So when you tag a wall, you've got to gently get a little bit further away than you normally would. By the way, this is in the exclusive series over in tier 20. That's where you would find this race. And it is, well, it's a race that might have you saying more colorful language than normal, but do your best not to. So try it and then just, you know, give yourself a break. So it's, uh, it's an interesting race very high speed action so like i was saying not not just knowing your time trial lines but also like right here i'm having to do an outside overtake where normally i like to do an inside overtake there but if i waited for that inside overtake i'd give up too much same with here sometimes i'm inside sometimes i'm outside you got to be able to do both 
And how do you recover when you lose traction? Hey, there's so many things you have to adjust to. Like, uh, and then you're changing lap by lap. Like here, I'll go for the inside. If that was lap 11 or 12, no, I'd have to, actually he'd be breaking even later and I'd be, ooh. See what I mean? How the walls can sometimes suck you in? Gotta be careful. So hopefully I can catch some draft. That's sketchy. And then breaking here. Here's often where I end up in trouble. The, some of these corners are difficult. You might notice I don't have the map on. I found that I just was never using it. It was almost more of a distraction in replays. So I'm sorry if you'd like to see the map. Uh, some of these corners are sharper than they seem. So here's that, that overtake I was talking about. Nice and clean. Didn't touch a wall. Very good. Not very easy, but very good. Breaking points. Okay, quick little freeze frames. And then check out a close aim to that wall. Chicane, right up some getting to this curb. Into that throttle very early. Watch the building on the right. There's a gap and there's the building. I'm on the brakes there. Now we're watching. I'm gonna do it a little bit earlier, but I'll show you my normal breaking point here. Just as that shadow's ending, you wanna be on those brakes. If it was normal, if there was no bot in your way. Just as I'm leaving that curb, I'm on the brakes for a tiny bit. Just as the curve's starting on your left, then we're full throttle for a ways here. I do a tiny micro lift here this time. Normally I don't, right where the shade is and holding it for a long time. Then normally, very quick on the brakes here, I'd be back to the throttle normally earlier than that. So those are my braking points that I use in this car and um, pretty well any higher grip car. And cars are a little bit looser. You either have to brake at the second chicane or at the very least, you have to lift for a bit. Otherwise, it's really no change from that. There's always little tweaks here and there for certain cars, but most cars, like there's the odd car you could skip this braking point in. Very few. Like, I think the Ferrari 412 and the McLaren MP4X. Oh, this is going to get sketch. Ooh! I wasn't sure about that. That is an ugly thing to do. It's very, very easy to get tagged there. Oh, by the way, speaking of getting tagged, um, this gets ridiculously difficult further up because the bots end up being really fast. And so they're disappearing when you head into a chicane like this. Sometimes I've been rear-ended. Not only do the bots get faster, I didn't notice this. They actually get a grip improvement. I've had ghost bots take corners faster than I can only at this track. Never seen it anywhere else. So that's extremely interesting to me that it seems like all their specs seem to get a bit of a boost when they're disappearing, which gosh, it doesn't make any sense. This coming up here ends up being one of the worst places for a goal spot, and you will see that later on. It does catch me. Oh boy. So we're getting to that point. Yeah, let's do an average speed test. So I, I, I marked down the exact distance and time when I was doing that. Now this isn't a perfect lap. This is a pretty good lap in traffic. So it'll give us a reasonable, a reasonable sense of what my average speed would be. Because I went backwards for so long at the beginning, um, it's hard to just take the overall average speed. So I decided I would do this, just taking a snapshot. We'll catch a snapshot of my distance and time at the line. And then it's simply distance divided by time times 3,600 to convert to hours. And we'll get that right away. I'm rounding this corner, catch a little bit of draft, makes up for some of the mess I was doing. And there we go. And from that, we can see I did 2.62 kilometers. So that means 219 kilometers an hour or 136 miles per hour. So that's pretty fast. When you think about this, like most average people have never even driven that fast. That's scary fast without walls being all around you. And you know, I mean, sometimes like there, there is barely enough room to fit a piece of paper between my mirror and the wall. So yeah, we're going fast. Like taking this full throttle, uh, I did a micro lift there. Sometimes I do, it doesn't hurt doing a micro lift too much. I mean, you don't want to risk hitting, the sh hitting that chicane. Now I'm going to stay hooked up, even though I was hitting them a bit. I'm going to stay hooked up here. Try to get an inside pass. This is where the bots are getting fast. No, I better do outside. Okay, oh boy, let's watch what happens here. Oh, you lovely, I tag both walls. Oh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Oh, yuck, I hate that. This is where it starts to get to me. My time's running out, I've gotta stay composed. I can't afford to be tagging all these walls. 
or he's just ruining my chances at the perpetual point, which should be right in front of me. It's got to be coming up right away. Okay, do we see it here? Uh, couldn't really see around that corner. Oh, that guy's going to be right on my tail. Oh, good, I survived that. Okay, I don't like this. My time is so low, it's got to be the perpetual point there. Lap 14 already. Yikes. I haven't done this very much with this doing the backwards technique. Okay, yep, there they are. There we are, guys. Perpetual point. Oh, I made it. Now, how far can I go? You see, it's not if you get damaged, it's when. Oh, take that wall. That won't damage me. Okay, here I can get a nice inside, outside pass. Sorry, at that point. Skittish a little bit. Now, here I definitely can keep it full throttle. Definitely have to. And uh, this is going to get dicey. I might hit him a bit. Actually, you know what I decided to do? Wall breaking. I was grinding the wall on purpose. All right, catch nice draft. Maybe I can do an inside pass this time. Let's see if I can pull that off. Oh, yeah, come on. Yeah, baby. Then we got to take this really fast. Now, watch the gains I get. Bear in mind, that bot was just faster than a fully upgraded car. That's the best the bots can do with that chicane, even with the top level assists that they have. Like, I don't know if you know that, if you've seen my other videos, you do, but every car you face after the perpetual point is faster than a fully upgraded car. Perpetual point is after you pass 42 cars. It's not a matter of distance or time. Okay, watch this. Oh no, it'll be okay now. But let's, let's see if he starts drafting me. Nope, I lost him, good. Sometimes you can tell that a bot is driving up very fast behind you because they start drafting. Now this is going to get questionable. Can I get to the chicane first? Yes, I got there. Oh, he didn't get under me. I was nervous. As you can see so far, I'm driving as hard as I can and I'm barely able to keep the timer where it is, let alone fill it up again. Oh, see that? He was drafting on me. That'll throw off my braking point. Oh, this is just so difficult. Okay, what about here? Can I get an overtake? No, I better slow down a tiny bit and overtake them at the chicane. Oh, that's scary. Now, what about this? Check this out. This gets violent. He's all over me. So he can completely ruin your entrance to the last chicane, even though you overtake him a couple of corners prior. It's just, oh my gosh. It's just so difficult. Here, I'm trying to drive it in. Oh, come on. Oh, nuts. Okay, I figured, you know what, I'm damaged. Just forget it, let's just see. I might not have been too damaged before that pit maneuver. Now I'm really damaged. So now it's bump a time, baby. I finally beat the distance I was trying to beat. I was using every trick in the book and I could not beat that distance. Look at that, you see that bot? I mean, he drove into the wall. Okay, I'm trying to drive this in super deep. Like I'm taking this all the way to the wall, guys. And, oh, we're fighting. Ah, more fighting! Did I... Oh, nuts, I had overtaken him. He's dry, dying. Ah, oh, I got tangled up there. Again, guys, brutally, brutally hard. It is actually a decent paying race, and I'm going to show you that in a bit. Uh, bear in mind that I gave up some time. Some of my, my fame per minute and art per minute won't be great because I was driving slow at the beginning, and I'm just about to run out of time and coast for a while. So that's also going to lower my earnings per minute. But still, it'll give you a good reference point. You know what? Let's double time this because I'm just coasting here and that's kind of boring. So we're going to double time it. I'm going to end it right at 47. Just makes my math easier. I'm going to grind it into the wall. So actually, it's not bad. Race time, 13 minutes, 43 seconds. I'm going to extract the one friend bonus. So R per minute, 55, 14. No manager, no agent. 914 fame per minute. So please like and subscribe. Don't try this race unless you really want to get frustrated. It's quite the challenge. Uh, here's some other videos you might like, including some other Melbourne Endless Endurance races. Thank you so much for joining me today.